Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. As you may already know from the title, today I'm bringing you a new 3D printer review. In this case I'm gonna review the Easy 3 Dora, a very compact consumer 3D printer, specially produced for beginners, kids, schools or education in general. I've been using it since it was sent to me by Easy 3 the company that manufactures them a while ago. And I'm quite happy with the prints I'm getting out of it. If at the end of the video you're impressed by the quality and the price of this nice 3D printer, I will let you down in the description the link to their online store, where you can buy it right now for 230 bucks. I will link as well their website, Facebook page and email in case you wanna raise them out. First of all, I'm gonna start with the unboxing. And then we'll see the best features of this Easy 3 Dora. But before starting, be sure to click here in the subscribe button and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me create new content and grow in the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Alright, so this is the box we received and we're going to open it real quick to see what's inside. As you can see, as well as with the Nano, the 3D printer comes very protected with different layers of foam and other protections. Once we get the foam block out of the box, the first that we can find is the power cable that comes with the UK version of the plug since it was sent to me from the UK store. When we release the foam, we can see that the printer comes fully assembled inside this protective bag and all the other components of the printer are in the interior. As you can see, it is more or less the same unboxing experience we had with the AZ3 Nano that you can see clicking here in the top right corner. Finally, if we take it out of this protective bag, here we have our AZ3 Dora 3D printer. It looks really cool, isn't it? I'm gonna remove now all the components from the inside, protections, etc. to have a better look of the 3D printer itself. This printer features three transparent plastic windows that will protect the user from suffering any danger, as well as improving the control of the temperature to print for example in ABS. I'm gonna leave the windows here and I will talk about them later. Now I'm gonna take out this white box that by the way says E3D Nano. And finally, I'm gonna remove this set of foam protections that the manufacturer placed here to protect the extruder block during the shipping. As you can see, both the extruder and the heated bed are able to move perfectly. Inside the printer, I found as well an injection molded plastic part that I guess is the filament spool holder. And it seems to go right here in the back of the machine. Finally, you're gonna see this satisfaction moment that all of you are waiting for. Then we'll see a couple cool shots of this nice 3D printer we just unboxed. Now I'm gonna remove the printer and this box from the shot and I'm gonna talk about the transparent plastic panels but before you will enjoy with this satisfying noise one more time. As you can see, here we have the three transparent panels of the printer. Despite they look great, if we take one to have a closer look, we can see that some of the parts to hold the windows in place are almost broken. I suppose they broke during shipping, but they are still able to hold the windows in place after all. Next I'm gonna put the windows away and I'm gonna continue with the content of this white box. Alright, so once we open it, the first we can find is a 250 grams spool of white PLA filament, a very good filament if it's the same that I tested and was included with the AC3 Nano. Next we find a 50 cm USB cable, this yellow spatula that you will essentially use never, and also the power brick where we will connect the included power cable or the one of your region. 
Finally, we can find the small plastic bag here that contains an Allen key to level the bed and this metallic part that I don't really know what it's meant for. Oh wait, and there is something else in the box. It looks like a cool USB SD card reader that contains an 8GB genuine SanDisk SDHC card, what is a very cool detail from EasyThread. By the way, if you want to know more about their printers, you should definitely visit their webpage at easythread.com as well as their new online store in Aliexpress. I will let you the links down in the description and now I'm gonna let you with a couple cool shots of the Easy Treat Dora. It looks damn good, isn't it? We are in front of a customer 3D printer, but the first we see when we look at it is its compact size and unique design. If we compare it with the AZ3 Nano, as well as the Architect 3DP i3, this printer features a size in between both of them. Also takes some of the best features from each side, such as the quality components and electronics from the Architect 3DP i3, and the size, security and design of the AZ3 Nano. Alright, so as I was saying, the printer is very compact. Its exterior size is 305 by 250 by 268 mm, while the print volume is in this case 120 by 120 by 120 mm. The weight of this printer runs the 6 kg, what makes it not as portable as the Nano, but quite portable as well due to its compact form factor. This fact, together with its good looking design, makes it suitable for any space. As we can see on the AZ3 webpage, you can have it in your bedroom, in a school, in a toy shop, and yeah. I don't know if I will bring my 3D printer to a coffee shop, but why not? One of the uses that we have seen in the AZ3 website is a school, and it's because this 3D printer is a really good choice for school, kids, or education in general. Since it has three transparent windows, it will prevent kids to get injured by the extruder or any other component. In addition, the fact that it is very easy to use makes this printer perfect for the small ones of the house. Easy Treat has two versions of the Dora, the one with the touchstone version that only has four physical buttons, and this version that features a 2.8 inches LCD screen with touchscreen. We'll see how it looks later, and now we're gonna continue with the best features of this 3D printer. Alright, so as well as in the Nano, all the electronics and some motors are located in a closed place underneath the heated bed. The movement is transmitted from the electronics to the nozzle through a different set of components. For the X-axis, an EMA 17 stepper motor inside of the extruder block moves it from left to right through these two calibrated 6mm smooth roads. The Y-axis in this case will be driven by the heated bed moving back and forth. It's controlled by an EMA 17 stepper motor, smooth roads and a GT2 belt underneath. The Z-axis is controlled by two EMA 17 stepper motors that drive these two T8 threaded roads and to improve the precision, the bridge goes up and down through these four calibrated 5mm smooth roads. With all these improvements, we'll be able to print with very high precision, with a layer height from 0.05 to 0.3mm and a print speed from 10 to 100mm per second. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about the extruder of this 3D printer. As you may have seen in the footage, the AZ3 Dora is using a Bowden extruder. To start, the spool of filament will go here in this holder we assembled before. Notice that despite the 250 gram spool of filament was included, you could perfectly fit a 1 kg spool of filament if you want. The filament is inserted into the Bowden tube through this MK8 extruder that is driven by an EMA 17 stepper motor that we can see from the interior, and is perfectly protected in the exterior by this plastic enclosure. The filament is driven through the Bowden tube until it reaches the hot end that is inside the extruder box. This hot end, by the way, is supposed to reach the 230 degrees with no problem. Finally, the filament reaches the nozzle here at the bottom. As you can see, in this case we can find a layer fan inside the extruder block, something that we missed a lot in the AZ3 Nano. This layer fan will allow us to make better overhangs and bridges in our prints. As you may have seen until now, the build quality is very clean. You won't see any cables laying around since they are all organized under the heated bed. And the ones coming out of the extruder are perfectly wrapped and protected all the way through. In surface, it doesn't feature a heated bed either. But the rubber coated surface will stick your PLA prints just perfectly. Furthermore, this bed is magnetic, removable and flexible. It will let you remove the prints from the bed very easy, as you can see here. 
all right so as i mentioned before especially if you're going to use this 3d printer with kids you should install the three transparent windows in place what will make your dg3 dora even more compact as you can see here in the front of the 3d printer the only thing we have is the 2.8 inches lcd touch screen if we look at the sides, in one side we can find the power switch that we missed in the Nano. And if we flip it to the other side, here we'll find the USB socket to print from the computer, as well as the SD card reader to print autonomously. If we finally have a look at the back, we'll find the spool holder, the cables coming from the extruder that come perfectly wrapped and protected, and go to the interior through this hole right next to the power socket. And finally, we'll find the Bowden extruder assembly we just mentioned. Alright, so that have been more or less all the important features of this 3D printer. Now it's time to stop talking and make the first print out of it. For that we'll pick up the provided SD card from the USB SD card reader and we'll insert it into the 3D printer, but notice that you will have to insert it upside down. Now we'll rotate the printer and we'll put the filament spool in place. You have to run it like this, since it will enter the extruder in this position. Next we'll connect the power cable to the power brick, and finally plug this cable into the 3D printer power socket here at the bottom. The next step will be to hit the power switch, and yeah, the LCD screen turned on. Now if we touch the defining feature message, we'll have access to the main menu of the printer. Now I'm gonna start exploring these menus, and first I'm gonna click here in help. Here we can find the phone, address and more information about Easy 3 Cool. If we touch the screen again, it will bring us to the main menu. Now I'm gonna press the setup button. Here in about, we can see the firmware version, etc. Next, in Fit Retract, we'll be able to load and unload the filament. As you can see, once we enter in this menu, the nozzle will start heating up until it reaches the target temperature, that is, as you can see, 210 degrees Celsius. Once here, we can press the Fit or Retract buttons to load and unload the filament. We're gonna do it later, so now I'm gonna press back and enter in the menu Handset. In this menu, we'll be able to home or control independently each of the axes of the printer. You can move it, for example, 10 by 10 millimeters manually, or press the homing button to go to zero. As you can see, we can move the X, Y, and Z axes to a maximum of 120 millimeters. Now that I've set the ZX at 120mm, I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you the removable magnetic print bed that as you can see comes in and out very easy. Finally I'm gonna press the homing button, what will make an automatic homing of each axis. Last but not least, if we press the button unlock, it will turn off the stepper drivers and we'll be able to move the axis of the printer manually. Finally, I'm gonna press back for the last time, and I'm gonna enter now the menu model, where we'll find the list of G-codes that we have in our memory card. Right now, I only have this one called Huba, that was included in the SD card, that I don't know what it is, but I will definitely try it later. Alright, so now I'm gonna make the first print, but before we'll need to load the filament into the 3D printer. For that, I'm gonna move the extruder up a little bit. And we will go to Setup, Feed Retract, and wait until the nozzle reaches the 210 degrees Celsius. While we wait, I'm gonna go to the back of the 3D printer and I'm gonna prepare the filament. Once the temperature is reached, we'll touch on the button Feed, and as you can see the gears will start spinning. We'll then insert the filament like this, and wait a couple seconds until we see the filament coming out of the nozzle. And here we have it, look at this white spaghetti. Once the filament is loaded, we can now go to model and touch this huba.g code that was preloaded in the SD card. Then a print confirmation window will appear saying that this print will be printed from the layer 0. We'll click OK and then the print will start after auto homing every axis. I'm gonna let you now with the time lapse of the print. Sorry for this interruption, but you have to see how silent this printer is. It is actually pretty quiet if you're not printing at a very high speed. By the way, while the object is being printed, you'll be able to see in the screen the progress of the print, the laying being printed at this moment, and the remaining time and temperatures of the printer, what is actually a useful information. Now yes, I'm gonna let you with a time lapse of the print. Once finished, a print completed message will appear on the screen, and we can now press print again, or press OK to go to the main menu. Finally we'll turn off the 3D printer by clicking the power switch. 
Now we can remove the print bed and bend it to remove the 3D printed object. Once done, we can put it back in place. As you can see, it has some white marks in the rubber coated surface, and that's because the bed is not properly leveled. To level it, we'll pick up the provided Allen key and we'll have to adjust the height of every corner of the bed, getting finally this nice and even surface. As you can see, this is the Huba 3D model included in the SD card. It looks like a scary, weird baby. I don't really know what it is. But as you can see, the print quality overall is very good, and the finish of the surface is very smooth. I'm gonna let you now with some prints that I've made with this cool 3D printer. What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Right, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Remember that you will find all the links for the EZ3 Dora down in the description. I'm gonna make a video explaining how to configure this EZ3 Dora 3D printer, as well as the EZ3 Nano with Cura and their E3D Slicer. So stay tuned for the next videos in the channel. If you like this kind of content or you have any suggestions, just let me know down below in the comment section. Finally, I just wanted to ask you to subscribe to Architects 3DP if you still haven't. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and share this episode to reach more people that will enjoy with the new projects. And as always, a special shout out to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3DP or clicking here in the top right corner. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next video.